Welcome to another edition of the Florida Chamber's Bottom Line with our special guest, Representative Eric Frezen, who is also a chair of one of the House Education Committees. And with us is Dave Hart, uh, Executive Vice President of the Florida Chamber. Gentlemen, let's get started. Representative, um, obviously education is one of your key priorities. Let's just jump right into digital learning. Okay. Um, well, the Florida House, um, under Speaker Cannon's uh, leadership, is committed to, to one very um, real reality, and that is that the classroom, the modern classroom, has to change. Um, students are learning digitally, students at home, everything in their lives is outside of the context of what used to be your traditional textbooks and that sort of thing. And, um, and the Florida House is recognizing that the education delivery has to, um, has to advance, has to become more modern, and has to adapt to what the real world is going to meet um, for these kids in the future. So we're committed to that. Digital learning is a big priority for us, and we have a, a big bill that's moving through that's going to hopefully change the, the, the makeup of the, of the classrooms in Florida. Um, Dave, how important is this to the Florida Chamber, and, and what, how will it change the way a classroom setting is set up? Well, last year, uh, less than 1% of students were accessing some type of digital learning, and this legislation really blows the doors wide open for every student to participate in digital learning. It'll help prepare them better for higher education, and it'll really help prepare them to be that workforce of the yep. future to help modernize our economy. <clears throat> Now, critics are saying that this will be a burden on public schools. How do you respond to that? I don't think it'll be a burden on public schools. I think it'll actually um, it'll help public schools deliver that education that these kids need in a, in a more efficient way. I think one of the burdens that the public school system has is that it's our policies have almost forced it to keep the classroom looking like it did in the 50s and the 60s, where every single one of these kids is thirsting for knowledge to be delivered in a more rapid way. And I think digital learning provides for that. I think blowing the doors open on, on the availability of technology into the classroom um, will get these kids um, to, where, to where their brains want to go naturally anyway. And I think that's what we're committed to and what this bill is going to do. Charter schools is another issue mm -hmm. that you've been working on. Um, what benefit will that be to Florida, to the economy, to educating you know, our future workforce? Yeah, well, Florida um, Florida started uh, charter schools in 1996, 1997. And back then, you know, it was kind of like this experiment. Well, let's see what's, what's going to happen with this. Um, the, it, the, the jury's out. Charter schools in Florida are working, particularly the very high-performing charter schools in Florida are working. And, um, and we, we have to, to whatever extent we can in our policies, replicate that which is working and to, to the extent that um, with this charter school bill that we're doing which is incentivizing those very high performing charter schools to replicate themselves to go into neighborhoods where perhaps the traditional public school system is not serving the kids correctly um, that's what we're attempting to do with it we know that there are certain charter school models that are working very well in the state of Florida it's providing choice to 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 thousands and hundreds of thousands of parents at this point and we know that there's a waiting list of over 40,000 parents and students in the state of Florida that want to get into charter schools so to whatever extent Florida um, in our policies can incentivize the replication of successful models that's what we're doing in our charter school bill. And Dave from a business perspective. Yeah, from Representative uh, Fresen's point last year there were 35,000 students on waiting lists for charter schools that were ranked an A or a B so there right. couldn't be a better time for this right. legislation to give parents and students greater choice more opportunities. Moving along to the budget, obviously yeah. that is going to be the key focal point. From an education standpoint, what, what elements should we be watching for? Well, it all ties in. I mean, everything that we're trying to do with our policy has to tie in at some point with the, with the stark budget realities that we have right now. We all know that we're in an economic crisis, but what I think has to be remembered is that while we're trying to pass that budget, we cannot forego the reforms and moving forward in, in, into the future of what Florida needs to look like. So while we're dealing with with budget restrictions and while we're dealing with budget cuts, we can't throw out the baby with the dirty bathwater while we're doing that. And that baby is moving forward with technology, moving forward with choice, and moving forward with that which is working and perhaps doing away with that which is not working. Dave, anything? From the Florida Chamber's perspective, I would say this is the time of year where you often see traditional media writing every story about how much each program is funded, how much the House funds it, how much mm -hmm. the Senate's pro uh, uh, appropriates for it. And I would say that kind of misses the more important point, which is not how much money we're spending, but what are the outcomes we're getting for the money we're spending. So let's stay focused on the outcomes. Right. With that, very quickly, your bottom line of the week. I think my bottom line of the week is that while we're preparing for this budget conference, we cannot, we cannot forget that reform is never finished and that while we're making budget cuts and making budget adjustments, we must keep reform at the forefront and moving forward. Dave? 
I would agree. Uh, Florida's made great progress in the last few years. We've moved from 36th in the nation to 5th in the last five years in terms of our education program. But let's be honest with ourselves. We're no longer competing just with 49 other states. We're now competing globally. Thank you for both for being here. And to you, our viewers, thank you for joining us. We hope your bottom line is looking up.